The biggest story on deadline day at the moment is relating to Mo Salah. <laughs> a week ago at Chelsea, this man said that if Saudi Arabian clubs got to 150 million, then Mo Salah would go. It seemed that they're getting to 150 million. This man has just changed his mind off camera and said now they need 200. Where are you at with this? <laughs> you get a bit twitchy, aren't you? I want more. I want more money. <laughs> uh, no, I actually think Mo Salah. When you look at what Kane went for, I think it was about 100 million. I think Kane's maybe a, a, a year or two uh, younger, but he only had a year to go. Mo Salah's got two years to go, looks after himself brilliantly well. But for Liverpool to sell right now, they, they're not going to uh, want what he's worth. They're going to want well more than that. So probably is he worth 150 million if there was no Saudi Arabian situation at the moment? Of course he wouldn't be. It's probably around the 100 million mark. But... Why have they left it so late? If they wanted them that badly and prepared to spend that much money, why wouldn't they make this bid six weeks ago, a month ago? And I think it they probably be, have a decent chance to go. Is it fair to say sometimes when clubs come in, they've already got the nod from the agent of the player and that the player might be behind the scenes thinking about wanting this move? Well, listen, every player who's involved in, in, in negotiations, talk about moving, they can kill it straight away. You know, they've all got the social, me uh, social media channels if they wanted to. I actually think his agent came out about three or four weeks ago and this, this felt more like a rumour. And he actually said uh, if we wanted to leave we would we wouldn't have signed the contract basically uh, but it's up to Liverpool and it's up to Salah as well I mean he, you know he may not want to go uh, but I do think for any player I think even for supporters who love him and absolutely you know adore him don't want him to move if that number just keeps going up and up and up there is a stage where you think you know what you can't actually turn that down and that's 200. <laughs> that's, it's gonna cost you. that's inflation for you it's got <laughs> 50 million in a week Yes or no, will it happen? I don't think it will, uh, because it's come so late. I think if this situation would arose four to six weeks ago, I, th I think it you know, could have been a toss of a coin. It could certainly have happened, but it puts Liverpool in a position where they couldn't be able to replace him straight away. Uh, but if that number gets too big where the club couldn't turn it down, you say, well, OK, you may have to get to January uh, before you bring it. What are you laughing at? <laughs> it's the longest yes or no I've ever heard in my life, that. <laughs> right, moving on to the next one. Graven Birch, does he complete mid Liverpool's midfield rebuild? Is he the right player to come in alongside the ones they've already signed? Are you comfortable that gives Liverpool a great chance of succeeding this season, getting back up challenging City? Well, it's just interesting where he's going to fit in because I don't think he's necessarily the, the you know, this defensive midfield player that I think Liverpool are still needing, even though you know they brought a player in from Germany. I think he's more of a, a number eight, where they've, he's bought players in those positions, he's box-to-box, -box, gets forward. And I think that's why Bayern Munich got rid of him. Thomas Tuchel didn't want to play him in that in that position. He doesn't play that way, he plays slightly differently. So that's why he's moved on. He's a player Klopp, and I think the club wanted probably 12, 18 months ago as well. And I'm interested to see where he fits in, and if Jürgen Klopp thinks he is going to be that defensive midfield player, but I don't think that's his natural game. But he's young, uh, good pedigree, you know, play for two great clubs, Ajax and Bayern Munich. So, and, and to be fair, the fee is not that expensive. And my club, Manchester United, it looks like they've just completed the signing of left back, a uh, left back from Tottenham that we know, so uh, Reguilón. Roy will be delighted, won't Reg he? Pardon? Roy Keane will be delighted. <laughs> He's a big fan, isn't he? <laughs> Yeah, I have to say that I was a little bit surprised that we were going for Reguilon. I mean, obviously, we've got the issue with Luke Shaw, which means it is a stopgap, it is a sort of temporary measure. But, um, yeah, they've left themselves short in that position. But the main sort of signing that looks like could happen, may not happen, but they've been chasing him certainly throughout the whole of the transfer window is Amrabat. And I've always felt that he's not holding midfield here, but he plays in that position alongside Casemiro where he'll get on the ball and play, and that's what Eric Ten Hag wants. Is he the right player for Manchester United to stop that midfield issue occurring where they've obviously been cut through so many times this season so far? Well, it's obvious. We've spoken about this a lot in the early weeks of the season. That midfield's not working for whatever reason. Is that down to you know the makeup of the players? Casemiro struggling on his own in there. Does he need help? Where does Mason Mount fit in? Then he's a £60 million player going forward. I think Amrabat is a player I think the manager knows from Utrecht. I think I read that this morning. So he seems to have a tendency, Eric Ten he does need to go and get players he's worked with before. He gets a lot of players from the uh, from the Dutch league also. I mean, is is this a case of Manchester United panicking on the last day, or do you think this is different? No, I don't think the Amrabat one is a panic because I think they've wanted him from day one. I think he's wanted that ball play midfield player go back 12 months to Frankie de Jong. And Mason Mount isn't a ball play midfield player. He's more of a sort of, if you like, I think he presses well, I think he links well, I think he runs forward. I think he's always wanted this type of player. So I don't think this is a panic. I think it's always been within Eric Ten Hag's want that he, he wants a player like this. I, I just don't know why it's not happened earlier. Obviously, the other signings were brought in 
earlier in the summer. There's been an issue with getting players out, which has caused United a problem. Maybe it's that. But I think with the way the season started, the performance levels have been poor. And I know they've picked up six points, but that could have easily been a lot less than six points. The Wolves and Forest games, they were very fortunate in. So I think they have to react. They have to get someone in before the window, because that midfield is a massive problem. I don't think it's a panic. The, the regular one is definitely a reaction to, obviously, the situation that's occurred that is more of a panic. Is that enough to make Manchester United challenge a lot closer to Manchester City this season? No, you, you, you'll know from what I said three weeks ago, I was worried that the Mount, Hoyland and Anana signings hadn't made Manchester United any better. And I think that, if anything, it would just maintain where they're at. I think what we've seen in the first couple of weeks is a little bit worrying because the performance levels have been well below what I would expect. So I'm, I mean, nowhere near Manchester City. That's a fact. I don't think any United fans thinking that. But what we would have wanted was to get closer to Arsenal, make sure we stay above Chelsea, Liverpool, uh, and all the other clubs. That that's the issue at the moment. Are Liverpool and Chelsea and the other clubs like Newcastle and sort of Aston Villa, are we as strong as them? I think we will get better. There's a lot of experience in there, but I'm a little more worried than I was a few weeks ago. But I was never bought into this idea that we were better. 